Hello and welcome back to this uh, playlist uh, that we started to calculate and analyze a rigid connection according to Eurocode 1993-18 and we modeled with different options for bolt modeling in ANSYS. In this video, I'm going to calculate the maximum capacity of the connection with the nonlinear material modeling. This is the latest one with the bolts as beams that we went through together in the previous video. And now we are going to change everything for beam calculation. As we noticed, these rigid joints might not be very accurate for calculation. And also in these two cases, we got good values for the tension. But for the shear force, it was really debatable if, if the shear force will be negative or or is it reliable or not but at least in the bolts to be considered as uh, beams for modeling even though it is written in ANSYS that these beams are for those under bending moment but still when we model the bolts with the bolts for sure we have some kind of bending moments as a result this would be perhaps the best option for modeling without modeling accurate uh, beam or accurate uh, bolt here i just duplicate and now i'm going to change the material to be non-linear material uh, i can keep it here first of all we need to change the material we go through the material source and then we select general non-linear material from here a structural steel i add two here i delete this part this is going to be S355 and this is going to be for bolts 8.8. Uh, I can change the Young modulus to 210 gigapascal and also the yielding point to 355 and 1 megapascal for tangent modulus. For bolts, the same value for the modulus of elasticity. This is 640 megapascal and we take it as one as well. When you delete the default material and you come here, everything that is by default was uh, assigned to be the default material shows to be with question marks so we need to again define and assign the material s355 and plates also s355 and also bolts which are now without material m88 the same also here Now, if you want to solve it, uh, it starts to control by program. Here we can see that there is no auto time stepping. Assume that you want to apply the load with the constant intervals. For example, if we start to run this, then the analyzers will be done with uh, just program intervals. Typically, it starts with 0 0.2 seconds, meaning that 20% of the load is applied and then it starts to increase the load by its uh, uh, automatic calculation but if you want to have a, a nice graph then you can adjust it to be done in the auto time stepping on and here you can define what is the minimum sub step and also initial sub step and maximum sub steps here also you can define by sub steps or by time as far as I want to get all the results uh, similarly with the same interval, I will adjust for 50 uh, sub steps. It means that the load will be applied 0 0.2, 0 0.02 of the entire load. Also, if we go with these two, perhaps we see nothing to be changed. But as far as I'm going to check what is the capacity, we need to increase this value. Let's multiply it by three. And as long as the top might not have enough capacity for three times, I will go with two.
and now we just need to solve it now it takes longer as far as it's going to calculate every 0 0.02 seconds or divide it with 50 sub steps here we can see the convergence results here you can see that it uh, started with 0.02 or 2 percent of the load is applied for the first uh, calculation after that it will go directly with uh, 2 percent interval up to 100 percent so it takes longer than uh, previous calculation Now uh, it has been finished and every 0 0.02 seconds or with the interval of 2% loading has been assigned and here are the results. Some important notes about this uh, convergence page uh, necessarily crossing the force convergence with force criterion might not be uh, the point of or the fact to be converged. Also here, if you look at these uh, steps up to here, that is almost 0 0.35, something like that. Every single equation has been solved with one iteration. It means that uh, it's completely linear up to here, 30% of 150. And after that, it starts to put more iterations and then you can see that it has been uh, done for example for more iterations at some points uh, the main reason is changing the contact or the uh, situation of the material in terms of getting plastic or not now we can check the results it's going to be up to 87 millimeter deformation I can bring this up that we can see better. The stress, as far as it's uh, limited to 355, uh, we can see that it's going over because of tangent modulus. Here you can change the graph to have a better appearance. And if we go through this part, we can see I change this to 355 and here to 340 close to being plastic and we can see the places that it starts to be plastic here we can see a weakness of columns web uh, in compression here we can see also a little bit being plastic in the beams web in compression and that's all the rest is more or less close to the weld contact tool interesting part here we can see that it's going to be completely without any contact it means that all the failures are coming from the failure of the bolts and if you remember from video number three of this playlist the calculation of these two bolts or row number one considering the end plate was in the mode number two it means that we should have some kind of prying force and here we can see the effect of prying force when it's going to be failed then the moment reaction okay uh 90 kilo newton meter shouldn't be that exact but uh, okay, 90 kilonewton per meter. We can see that 
it's coming up to a value and after that it starts to decrease as far as it's not taking any more uh, bending moment so the maximum bending moment for this uh, section and connection is 90 kilonewton meter and flexible rotation we can see that uh, it's coming to one point somewhere in the 0 0.7 or 0 0.60 something as a linear and after that it starts to decrease for the beam props here we can see that uh, the maximum load in the row number one one bolt is 135 kilometer in our calculation it was 232 kilonewton for bolt row number one and we should divide it by two which is 116 the main reason is that in our hand calculation we are considering the bolt uh, maximum capacity according to some partial factors like 90 percent of a few and also divided by gamma m2 which is 1.25 as a result it is reasonable that here we have larger or we have uh, bigger values the same here and also in our calculation in the bolt row number two the maximum capacity was 282 for two bolts or 141 for each bolt here we can see that it's 155 again the same reason and it looks pretty uh, close to what we calculated here the load in the bottom bolt is 23 kilonewton which we ignored it still we have the same moment resistance but here in the calculation this bolt is also taking tension perhaps it would be wise if someone wants to calculate with these two but literally it is not really needed the bending moment that we calculated is pretty close to what we have here the same here and in the top we can see that it's 82 it started to be perhaps non-linear but as far as we applied less load it didn't happen for that now we are going to sketch the moment and uh, rotation in one chart here we can select these two and then we can select the chart from insert and x-axis we can go with flexible rotation and we can omit the time also i'm interested in only zeta direction of bending moment here we can see the results how it looks like up to this value about 70 kilonewton meter it's it looks to be completely linear and after that it starts to behave non-linear we can also copy these values and make an excel graph for that this is bending moment kilonewton millimeter and the other one is rotational angle in degree and here i can have bending moment in kilonewton meter and also to have in positive direction i will go with the absolute value of that
pending moment versus tet. So here we can see how it looks like and also if we have this graph we can easily find out the bending moment and theta accordingly. So here for example if we go with 44 that we calculated earlier it will be somewhere here which was 0 0.15 according to our calculation and also earlier in this calculation. And uh, one more thing is about the uh, 20 kN that uh, we applied in our hand calculation versus 15 kN per meter. I can bring the MATCAT sheet we had earlier. So we went through 20 kN and we adjusted this to 1.18. And it was 63.8 kilonewton meter with the degree of 0 0.254. So if we go with the 20 kilonewton meter, the total force will be 20 times 3.334 meters. Let's go with Q. And it will be in total 67 kilonewton. And right now we applied 150 kilonewton. So F divided by 150 kilonewton will be around 44% of the load. Now, 44% of the load, it means that it's in the order of 0 0.44. From here, we can see that the value will be 58 kilonewton in the nonlinear calculation. So here we can compare that 58 kilonewton with our calculation by hand 63 and also the rotation is about 0 0.2 and in our hand calculation it's 0 0.25 degree. So this is just comparison between also, we can check with the 15 kilonewton per meter that the mu was 1 and then it's 0 0.33. So it will be something between 0 0.32 and 34. Somewhere here. And according to our calculation, it was... 49 kilonewton meter and here we can see that it's almost 44 kilonewton we already calculated it in the previous video and the rotation is about 0 0.15 and here we have 0 0.16 so this is the comparison with the hand calculation and how to uh, analyze the connection in a non-linear way with ANSYS that's the end of this uh, video. We went through the calculation and the modeling of rigid connection with hand calculation and also compare with the different options in ANSYS how to model and how a reliable uh, method would be with the ANSYS modeling. In the next video, I will use RFM6 for modeling the frame and adjust the values for the stiffness in a way that we get the same results thank you for watching see you next time bye